This video has been sponsored by Mesos CNC Controllers. This is a Cockney cab manufactured by Mattel in 1971 and 1972. 1971 is a very interesting year as far as the Spectraflame era goes. Mattel created 35 new models and 22 regular line models for this year, including the car you see here. 1971 is also a year collectors were introduced to crumblers. These are cars that had a bad mix of die-cast metal and over the years would literally crumble to dust. Kids who stored these cars away in cases would open them up years later to find nothing but plastic and steel axles in a pile of dust where there once was a car. 1971 also saw sales drop and production costs go up dramatically. As such, there's only seven new castings created in 1972, with 19 models carried over from 1971, including this one. The metal buttons that came with every car were made of plastic in 1971 and then were completely omitted in 1972. All production was moved to Hong Kong and the Spectra Flame era came to an end. The Red Line era would continue, but the cars would no longer have the iconic Spectra Flame paint. This cab was sent to me by a subscriber several years ago. I'm not sure if it was produced in 1971 or 72. When I received it, I noticed that it was broken in several places. At the time, I knew I could only glue it back together as all my attempts at soldering die casts had failed. I put it aside hoping that I could one day solder the parts back together. And well, that day's finally arrived. So I can now restore this casting and use it as an example of how you can repair broken die cast parts by soldering them back together. So let's get started. After taking the car apart, you can see that this is one of the rare cars that have what I like to call caged parts. The engine and headlights are not attached to any other part of the car and are instead caged between the body and the base. Looking at the body, you can better see the cracked die cast that I'll need to repair. There's also a broken bumper you'll see later. It looks like the child may have slammed the car into something causing the bumper and body to break. The other plastic parts seem to be in reasonable shape, so I'll go ahead and remove the paint. Now because this video is really to highlight the die cast repair, I'm not going to go into as much detail on the restoration as I normally would. I have dozens of red line restoration videos that showcase all the steps I'll be showing here. However, one thing I have not used in any of those videos is one of these fiberglass scratch brushes. This was also sent to me by a subscriber named Patrick and works really well to get into tight places to remove the paint residue. The end of the brush is made up of thousands of fiberglass strands, and since the glass is harder than the paint, it can scratch and remove it. This works extremely well, but I should note that you should wear a dust mask when using it, as you don't want to breathe in all of those super thin and sharp glass fibers. Once I removed all the paint with the glass fiber brush, I can then electropolish the car to remove the oxides on the metal surface. This will significantly brighten the metal. Now that the paint and oxides are removed, I can go about repairing the cracked die cast. The first step is to copper plate the metal. This is done with a kit I purchased from Micromark, and I have a complete video on how to use it that I'll link in the video description. The copper plating is what will allow me to solder to the die cast metal. Simply put, I have never found a way to solder directly to raw die cast. Different people have sent me links to all sorts of expensive solders and fluxes they say should work, and I have no reason to doubt them. However, I decided to go with this method as copper plating cars is something I do on occasion and copper plating allows me to use regular solder sold in stores. So by no means am I saying this is the only way to do this. I'm sure if you look below in the comments, you'll see other recommendations by other viewers you can try if you feel this method will not work for you. After the part is copper plated, I'll go over it with a brass brush to clean and polish the copper. Next, I'll apply a little bit of flux to a toothpick. This flux will help the solder flow into and around the broken die cast. Now comes the somewhat dangerous part. I'll be using a gas powered soldering iron. These get really hot really fast and I don't have to mess with the cord. Since I'm doing this on camera, this is really helpful. I'm using a low temp solder, but as I said before, you can use any electronic or plumbing solder you like. I'll leave a link to this solder below. I'm by no means an expert in soldering, especially soldering through a little screen on my camera so no need to point out my obvious lack of soldering skills below. I'm also aware that I'm calling it solder and not solder. Where I live, it's called solder, and if you walk into a store and ask for a solder, they're just gonna look at you funny. Not everything is pronounced the same way everywhere. Once I'm sure I have the solder around the broken area, I'll let the part cool. Once the part cools, I can start using a file to file everything back into its original shape. Here again, how much work you have to do is very dependent on how good you are at soldering in general. But in the end, I think I got it to look close to what it was before. 
I'm going to pause on working on the body for a moment and work on the base. This casting uses the cap style wheels, which pretty much all cars had around this time. These caps are easily removed with the sharp object being wedged between the cap and its base. Once this happens, I give the blade a little twist and the cap pops off. This looks more dangerous than it is. There is almost no pressure on the blade, and if I was to slip, there's not enough pressure to cut myself. A better way to do this, however, would be on a hard surface like a table. While I have my knife out though, I'll go ahead and remove all the carpet fuzz that is spun around the axle. Just like the body, I'll clean up the metal and remove all the oxides with the electro polisher. Here you can see the cracked bumper I'll need to solder back together. So I'll go ahead and copper plate the bumper and then try to bend the part back into place. Now the thing about die cast is you can typically only bend things once, especially small parts like this, before they break. And I knew this before I tried, but thought I might get away with it. But no, it popped right off. So no big deal, I'll just solder the part back on. However, my solder job was not very clean, so I ended up trying to fix it with the soldering iron and ended up losing the part. After looking for it for about 30 minutes, I decided to heck with it and just added a large amount of solder to the end of the bumper and then filed the solder into the shape of the part I lost. And while it's not a perfect match, I don't think anyone would notice who didn't have it pointed out. Once I had everything shaped and sanded, I test fit the body and the base to be sure nothing was out of whack for my repair work. Everything went back into place, so I moved on to the engine. The engine, as you can see, is very heavily oxidized, so I'll give it a few seconds in the polisher to clean off all the oxidation. Once that's done, all the parts are ready for zinc plating. Zinc plating is necessary here as the zinc will cover the copper plating I put on earlier and blend everything together. Of course, it's also extremely useful to give the die cast metal a uniform brightness. This uniform brightness is what makes the car look new. It's what Mattel did when they made the cars. It also explains why Mattel dropped the Spectraflame paint in 72. Spectraflame needs this bright zinc layer to shine through the candy colors they painted on. Plating is an expensive step and removing it saved a lot of money. So in 73, we get all enamel painted cars. Speaking of paint, I chose to go with magenta as this is the color I thought looked best with the brown interior. Plus it's a color I haven't done in a while and one original to the Hong Kong version. While I wait for the paint to dry, I'll go ahead and snap on some new wheels and work on bending the axles into shape. Before I did this, I clear coated the base and engine in testers matte clear coat to protect the zinc plating. As much as I dislike the cap style wheels, I do have to admit that they are much easier to put back on. Taking a look at the windshield, I think I see a crack in the roof, but it's hard to tell with all the dirt and grime, so I'll wash the plastic in dish soap and water and then polish it with the Dremel and a buffing wheel. I get asked a lot about the Dremel I'm using, especially this one with the built-in LEDs. This is a Dremel Micro, and it's probably my favorite Dremel to use. It's super light and battery powered. The only complaint I have is the battery is non-removable. So once it goes, the Dremel is trash, unless you get in and hack out the old battery to replace it. That being said, I've had this one for several years using it weekly to make these videos, and it still seems to be going strong. After polishing the windshield, I'll wash it again with some soap and water, and then dry it with a microfiber towel. While I had the Dremel out, I decided to switch over to a polishing wheel and polish the headlights a little bit. This is a restoration and not a custom, so I'm not going to give them a mirror finish. I just wanted a slightly polished surface. It's been a few days and the paint is now dry, so I can go ahead and attach the reproduction sticker I picked up at the Redline shop. Once the sticker is attached, the project is almost done. All I need to do is put the car back together. Alright, so what can I say about this project? Well, I'm still practicing on my soldering technique and I've also been playing around with brazing. Though that would be its own video when I get around to showing that off. Brazing works better for larger areas while the soldering iron is better for the small work such as this. One reason I'm trying to get this working is due to a future Mad Max build I'm working on where I'll be bonding cars to each other. By the way, if you need your Mad Max fix right now, I'll leave a link to Danny's Diecast Disasters below. He's a new YouTuber who's been specializing in zombie apocalyptic customs videos. He's definitely worth your time and sub, so check him out. If you have any suggestions on how I could improve on this soldering method, please let me know below. Of course, I'm always interested in your thoughts on this car, so feel free to leave a comment. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.